got to remember, honor, and love our great heroes. They were Filipinos of courage and determination. Each of them dedicated the greater part of their lives by doing noble work for the countrymen and for the good of our beautiful country. These great heroes sacrificed for our beloved native land. They showed their love for all the Filipinos and of the country. Heroes of their time and countless of our time, we should share our task to continue the cause they had started. They can be our source of inspiration for the better and being human and low abiding citizens. Let us be a part and know their great lives by knowing their biographies and history of some of our great Filipino heroes. So, what are the significant contribution that makes them prominent or heroes of the country? Let's start with our Philippine national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal, the pride of Malay race and a national hero. Jose Rizal, a distinguished novelist, poet, physician, linguist, statesman, and a national hero. Jose Rizal was born in Calamba, Laguna in the Philippines in June of 1861 and was named Jose Protasio Rizal Mercado y Alonso Rilonda. Jose's family lived on rented property that was owned by a religious order from Dominica, which made them a family of wealthy farmers. He finished medicine and a well-known linguistic in different languages, but the most great achievements that Jose accomplished was the time of propaganda. He was an active Filipino to seek for the reform of his country during Spanish government. Through his novel Nole Metangere and the El Filibusterismo, these books brought out the cruelty especially to his countrymen. It spread out to the whole world about the Spanish tyranny, this lead for the sudden death of Rizal. He was sentenced to death on December 31, 1896 at Tabagumbayan, now popular as the Doneta Park. A Filipino who loved so much his countrymen and his motherland, fighting for a cause especially the independence of being free man on earth. Surely, we can say that Dr. Jose Rizal is the pride of the Malay race. Second, Andres Bonifacio. A father of the revolution, second famous hero of our race, and a founder of a Da Katipunan. Andres Bonifacio, the hero of the uprising Balintawak in 1896, born in Tundu, Manila, on November 30, 1863. He had great hopes and beliefs that his countrymen could maintain a free government. Because of this, he organized the Katipunan in Balintawak. He convinced Emilio Jacinto, the brain of revolution, to help him. When the secret of the Katipunan was exposed, Bonifacio and his men went to Balintawak. In August 26, the Katipunan under brave leader Bonifacio tore their poll taxes and waved the red flag as a sign of beginning of the revolt against the Spaniards. There was a misunderstanding when meeting was held at the Heros Malabon in 1877. Bonifacio formed a new government. The Spaniards heard about the organization. Later, Bonifacio was arrested and tried by the court of war. He and his brother Procopio were sentenced to be shot at Buntis Mountain on May 10, 1897. Bonifacio's legacy to his mother country was democracy. He left us the lessons we derived from his Decalogue. First, believe on one God wholeheartedly. Love your country and your countrymen. Third, it is an honor to die if cause is saving the country from slavery. Fourth, once this star is obtained by possessing coldness of heart. Take care of the secret of Nakatipunan just as you take care of your honor, and last, same one when is in danger. Bonifacio loved his native land and his people. His favorite saying, Liberty or Death. The first revolt began on Balintawak on August 26, 1896. The Filipinos were shouting, Long live the Philippine Republic! Third, Emilio Aguinaldo, the head of the First Philippine Republic. Aguinaldo, born in Cavite, Cavite on March 31, 1869. He won distinction for his military exploits and emerged as the recognized leader of his people who elevated him to the presidency of the First Christian Republic in Asia. During the revolution in 1876, he joined the movement as a lieutenant under General Valdemoro Aguinaldo. 
he rose to the rank of general in few months. He then conducted a campaign against the Spaniards until the Pact of the Acta Bato was signed in December 1897. When Manila surrendered to the American on August 13, 1878, Aguinaldo organized his provincial government at Macaor Cavite. Later, he transferred the seat of government to Malolos, Bulacan, where the Philippine Republic was reclaimed with Emilio Aguinaldo as president. The Treaty of Paris was signed on December 1, 1898. Ceding the Philippines to the United States in February 1899, Aguinaldo broke relations with America. This war lasted until Aguinaldo surrendered. Then he returned to Cauet Cavite to elevate his time in agriculture. Fourth, Apollinario Mabini. The sublime paralytic and advisor of the Philippine Revolution. A man of sublime ideals. That was Apollinario Mabini, sought the freedom of our country. He was a courageous patriot, a sagacious philosopher, and a learned statesman. His paralysis did not hinder him from working hard to gain the country's independence. Apollinario Mabini was born to a poor family on July 23, 1864. His father was Innocentio Mabini, a barangay captain, and his mother was Tunisia Maranan, a daughter of a village teacher. During his early age, Mabini loved to study. He preferred reading books than playing. He excelled in their little bar school. Because of poverty, Mabini did odd jobs to help his parents send him to school. He finished law at the University of Santo Tomas. Mabini became paralyzed in 1896. When Emilio Aguinaldo heard of Mabini's brilliant mind, he appointed Mabini as chief advisor. Since then, the paralyzed Mabini was scared wherever Aguinaldo needed him. Fifth, Marcelo H. Del Pilar, the editor of the popular La Solidaridad and a leading propagandist. Marcelo H. Del Pilar was a Philippine revolutionary propagandist and satirist. He tried to marshal the national sentiment of the enlightened Filipino illustrados or Borgois against Spanish imperialism. Pilar was born in Cubang, Bulacan on August 30, 1850 to cultured parents. He studied at the Coleo de San Jose and later at the University of Santo Tomas where he finished his law course in 1880. During the Spanish regime, Marcelo went to the town of Cupang, Bulacan. He finished law and sequestered the Spaniards to build schools throughout the country for the Filipinos. He firmly believed that it would be good for his countrymen and educational for all. The Spaniards got angry and suspected him of being enemy of Spain. He was advised by his lost relatives to leave the Philippines. He went to Spain. There he met Graciano Lopez, China, the founder of La Solidaridad. He met many difficulties, he kept on writing hoping that someday his country will be free for all sufferings from the Spaniards. He returned to the Philippines while on his way home he died of disease. Another Filipino patriot in the life of Marcelo H. Del Pilar, popularly known Pladadel as his pain name. 6. Sultan de Patuan Kudarat, a brave Muslim leader in Maguindanao. Sultan de Patuan Kudarat was known for his bravery and great leader in the part of Maguindanao. The Muslim Filipino in Maguindanao were not yet under the Spaniards and during 1619-1671. It was Sultan Kudarat who kept the unity of the Filipino Muslims in that part of the Philippines. During the three decades, the Filipino Muslim fought against the tyranny of the invaders. The strong leadership of Sultan Kudarat brought his people to fight against the Spaniards. Kudarat did not surrender the Spanish authorities until his death on 1672. To acknowledge his greater work, the government declared some parts of Mindanao to be named after him. Now, there was a place in Mindanao called Sultan Kudarat, a province near Cotabato, Isulan, and Coronadal, South Cotabato. 7. Juan Luna A great Filipino painter and have a prize winner in Euro for his paintings, The Death of Cleopatra, The Blood Compact, and The Spolarium. 
Juan Luna was born in Badoc, Ilocos Norte on October 23, 1857. During his student days, he showed good interest in paintings. In 1875, he obtained his certificate as a pilot at the age of 17. He traveled in Spain in 1877 to become a specialist in the art of designing. He entered Escuela de Bellas Artes in Madrid. Because of his exceptional ability in paintings, he was chosen by the Philippine government to become pensionado in Europe. He was given a pension of 600 pesos a year for about four years, but the Philippine government wanted him to submit at least some paintings to be used and to adorn the building of the government. Juan Luna with Alejo Vera, his teacher, traveled in the different countries of Europe. He reached Rome, Italy, and Paris. In 1881, during the celebration in Madrid, he obtained a valuable gold medal as prize of the picture he made, the death of Cleopatra. Afterwards, he was able to sell this picture for 5,000 pesetas. It was the highest price one could get for a picture. There were many paintings created by Juan Luna. Among them were Ang Espanya sa Pilipinas, Ang Aliping Bulag, Ang Labanan sa Lipanto, Ang Mistisa, and other which until now many believed cannot be surpassed. In 1891, he returned to the Philippines and in 1896, he was captured and imprisoned at Fort Santiago by the Spaniards who suspected that he had something to do with the Katipunan together with his brother Antonio Luna. In 1897, he was released. Again, he went to Spain to work for the release of his brother Antonio. After traveling in the different countries of the East, he got sick. This brought him to his grave on December 17, 1899. In honor of Juan Luna, a great painter and a patriot, one big city street in Manila and a school were named after him. 8. Melchora Aquino Well known as Tandang Sora, considered mother of the Philippine Revolution. She was known as Sandang Sora in the Philippine history because when the war broke out led by Andres Bonifacio in 1896, she was already old. At the age of 84, she joined the revolution. Tandang Sora used to keep a little store where she sold various goods in a small foods place in Balintawak, Quezon City. In August 1896, came the cruel Spaniards. They became more strong and radical, for they heard that Bonifacio's men were going to revolt. Hundreds of men in the city of Manila were captured and being forced to rebuild the secret of the Katipunan. They were severely punished and many of them were hung and still others were half dead. Some escaped to the forest of Balintawak. In the person of the Sora, they made an angel who took care of them. Everyone had managed to escape and come to Tanasora and was taken came off by her offer and services in her little store. Even women and children who came for her help in Tadansora's place, she offered her kind services. The Spaniards learned about her generous services. Instantly, the cruel Spaniards arrested and captured her, took Tandangsora to Manila and later exiled to Marianas Island. The old Tandangsora came back when the Filipinos already in the hands of the Americans. She was already very old and no more property. She lived poor and died very poor. Filipinos long remembered the courageous woman in the person of Tandang Sora who once offered her love for her countrymen and her motherland. Tandang Sora died on March 2, 1919. 9. Gabriela Silang, a revolutionary woman general. Gabriela Silang was the wife of Diego Silang, a revolutionary leader of Ilocos. Captured and killed by the Spaniards, after the death of her husbands, the Spanish army invaded the camp and got all firearms, ammunition, important documents that Diego Silang left. In this situation, Gabriela don't lose hope. Instead, she fought against the Spaniards. She continued the fight of her husband and the Ilocanos. She said, it was necessary for me to bring back the freedom that Diego Silang started. Gabriela Silang and the rest of her troops continued to fight against the Spaniards, but the Filipinos' ins insufficient arms bring them to lose the fight. Gabriela Silang was captured in the mountains of Abra. The Spaniards bring her and the remaining companions to Ilocos Sur. She was sentenced to die and the rest of her revolutionary troops on September 20, 1763 in Vigan, Ilocos Sur.